Hello, if you're watching this, it means that um, I've called in sick again. I'm sorry about that. Um, luckily, what we're doing today, multiplying monomials and polynomials, isn't too difficult. So I think you'll be okay. Um, go ahead, pause the video. Get the notes from last time if you don't already have them. Um, we're going to be referencing them a little bit today. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about this lesson right here, which is what we're doing today. Uh, the stuff on the bottom, multiplying binomials, we will do on Wednesday. So let's talk about multiplying monomials and polynomials. You'll recall monomial means one term. It's going to look something like 2b or 2b cubed. Those numbers on the outside only have one term, so therefore they're a monomial. And then on the inside, we have polynomials, which means many terms. We started here with just two terms, 2b minus 7 and minus 4. However, on your homework, you'll see that we go up to 3. The process is the same for 4 or 5 or any number of terms beyond that point. But for our purpose purposes right now, keeping it simple is probably for the best. Now, before we go on, I just want to do a quick refresher of how exponents work. So, for example, if we have something like 2 to the third power, keep in mind that is going to be the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2. Why do we multiply 3 times? Because that's what that number up there tells us. Similarly, if we had, say, something like 5 to the sixth power, that would be the same thing as 5 times 5 times 5, times 5, times 5, times 5. Now do you see why exponents become necessary? Because writing this out 6 times becomes a drag. When we are multiplying mon monomials into binomials, we have to do the same process with variables. So for example, on number 7 where it says 2b cubed, that's going to be the same thing as 2 from that number right there, times b, times b, times b. I switched to the dot because I don't want to throw x's in there and confuse you. There are three b's because we have a cubed right up there. Just a quick reminder about how exponents work because it will become relevant here in a second. When we are multiplying monomials into binomials, this is very similar to a very important word that we've talked about before. This is very similar to distribution. Uh, you'll recall that distribution means that when you have a number outside of a term, everything on the inside has to get multiplied. So this becomes the same thing as 2x minus 10. What we are doing today is very similar to what we just did there. The only difference is we have some variables on the outside that we are multiplying in. So for example, we have 2b times 2b. Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is just multiply the two numbers together. 2 times 2, that's going to become 4. And now we multiply the b's to each other. b times b. Well, how could we simplify that? Think about our rules of exponents. That becomes b squared. We also have to make sure that we share the 2b to the minus 7 as well. You have to multiply the outside term to everything inside the parentheses. Every term inside the parentheses deserves the love of the term on the outside. So that becomes 2b times negative 7. So first things first, we multiply the numbers. 2 times negative 7 is going to be 14. Negative, because negative 7 times 2 will become a negative number. And in this case, there isn't a letter on the 7, so the b just goes along for the ride. And there is our complete answer. I'm going to go ahead and walk our way through number 7 slowly like I just did. And then I'll do 6 and 8 kind of a little bit more quickly, the way that I anticipate you'll be able to do it on your assignment. So number 7, we have our monomial on the outside, 2b cubed. We have 7b minus 8 on the inside. Now, we have to make sure that 2b cubed, that term, gets multiplied to everything inside 
the parentheses. So that will become, first we multiply the numbers, 2 times 7, it's going to be 14. Now we have b cubed times b. Now here's where it gets kind of tricky. Keep in mind b cubed is going to be b times b times b. We're multiplying in one more additional b. I wrote it in green. So the question becomes, how many b's are there total? In this case, I think you will see that there are four. So then it will become b to the fourth power. If we wrote that as a general rule, it would be when multiplying, we add exponents. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and erase that big circle I made. What is the exponent on that b? A 1. So b cubed times b becomes b 3 plus 1, which is 4. We will talk more about this on a day that's not today. Uh, let's go ahead and finish out the problem. We have to multiply the 2b cubed to the 8 as well. So that will become minus uh, 16. 2 times 8 is 16. b cubed, giving us our full answer of 14b to the fourth minus 16b cubed. I'm going to go do number 8 now, and then I'll round out with number 6, because number 8 is a little bit more talking about what I think is the most difficult part of the lesson, which is this rule right here. When multiplying, we add exponents. So we have 6x squared on the outside, and we have 3x on the inside. So we're going to multiply the numbers together. 6 times 3 becomes 18. And x squared times x, well, we can go ahead and use a rule. When multiplying, we add exponents. If there's nothing else written there, we can always assume that there is a 1. So x squared, 2, plus x to the first, 1, is going to become x cubed. Uh, we can go ahead and finish that out. 6x squared times negative 5, that will become 30x squared. And our last one is going to be 2n times n minus 4. I'm just going to blast through this one. 2n times n, well, that's going to become 2n squared minus 8n. Make sure you multiply it into both terms. All right. Now, as a little treat for sticking out the video this long, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the homework assignment. I'm going to show you the answers to all of the even problems. You can use that as a reference point to check your work. It's kind of a privilege for those of you that stuck it out to watch the whole video. So we'll go right over here to books. There are the answers to the front side. If you need longer to look at them, go ahead and pause the video. And then here is the back side. Once again, if you need the answers a little longer, go ahead and pause the video.